Next up at UFC Vegas 93, we have the main event of the evening. We have Alex Perez stepping up on shortest notice yet again to jump into a main event slot. This guy hadn't fought for years. And now all of a sudden, three fights in the last couple of months, his second main event in two. Alex Perez, 25-8 and eight overall, 2-3 and three in his last five. He's coming off that quick knockout win over Mataus Nicolau. He's taking on the undefeated 15-0 and 0 Tatsura Tyra, who is walking into his first main event. And Alex Perez is an interesting guy to break down because he is very good, but the long layoff, the lack of wins, had people like me doubting his ability. He's a very good striker. He's got fantastic low kicks, solid wrestling. He's going to enter that pocket with boxing combinations and finish exchanges with leg kicks when he circles out. He averages more than two takedowns per fight. He has a very impressive 82% takedown defense. He's coming off that knockout win over Mataus Nikola, as I mentioned, in a short-notice main event slot. Similar to this one. He's taking on the undefeated flyweight prospect in Tatsuro Taira. He remains undefeated. He remains one of the best prospects on the planet. He's only 24 years old, but he has 15 fights with 12 finishes. Style-wise, he's a very patient striker. He has okay power. His hands are strong. His grappling is decent. He does not have the best takedowns in the division, but he will stick with them. He will drag you to the ground and he will work the jujitsu. He's coming off his first standing knockout win in the UFC. I was definitely an Alex Perez hater when he hadn't had a win in four years. I was all over that. This guy hasn't won a fight in four years. His first fight back is Muhammad Makayev. Good luck with that. And then he actually looked decent in the Muhammad Makayev fight. He defended some takedowns. Frankly, the only reason he didn't win that fight is because after defending the takedowns, he didn't let his hands go. If he committed to some of those exchanges, defended the takedowns, and made Muhammad pay for those entries, he could have done quite well in that fight. He was a little too tentative, and I get it. It was his first fight in a while, looking for a win against a young prospect shooting a million takedowns. But it was that takedown defense that gives me a little bit of confidence in this fight. Because frankly... Tatsuro Tyra doesn't have the takedowns that Muhammad Makayev does. Certainly better at jiu-jitsu, but doesn't have the takedowns that Muhammad Makayev does. And Alex Perez defended a good amount of those. If we look at the last fight, he fought Mataus Nikolaou. Mataus Nikolaou is supposed to be this phenomenal, accurate striker. And the fight wasn't necessarily long enough to know how it would have gone if Alex Perez didn't get an instant knockout, essentially. But all of a sudden, Alex Perez, who's not old, is back... Third fight in two months, three months, something like that. Fought one of the best wrestlers in this division, defended a good amount of those takedowns. Fought one of the best strikers in the division, knocked him out. And now Alex Perez is fighting a young prospect who hasn't fought anybody near the experience level. I think Alex Perez can win this fight. I think he can defend the takedowns because I don't think Tatsuru's takedowns are that good. And I think he can win the striking exchanges. And we're going to find out if Tatsuru Tyra has a little bit of dog in him. We watched him in some trouble in that Edgar Chavez fight. We watched Edgar Chavez give him a little bit of trouble, and he worked his way through that. But Edgar Chavez has since been cut from the UFC, and I don't think he ever got a win. Alex Perez is going to be the pick. I'm going with him in the underdog slot here. What do you think, Jakey Boy? Yeah, I just don't really kind of get it, honestly. We've we've seen Alex Perez get, kind of get rolled by grapplers, and people want to say, oh, I think he won that Makayev fight, but he was getting taken he down. He fight. literally... He literally just didn't do enough. I mean, there was no, you want to talk about the sense of urgency. There was no sense of urgency on that. Do anything. And he probably do win that fight. He wasn't doing anything. I mean, he was I literally agree. just worrying about defending the takedowns. Now you have a guy in Tatsuro Tyra who, who is definitely more well-rounded than Makai. He doesn't have the all-in wrestling, but Makai was so sloppy. I mean, he was so telegraphed at those shots. He wasn't trying to set any of those shots up. Tatsuro Tyra now has, has well-rounded his game as young as he is. I was a, a, a guy that I could not wait I, I, I picked against Tatsuro Taro all the time. I couldn't wait to fade this guy every opportunity. And then you realize it's too late now. It's too fucking late. The guy is too well-rounded at this point. You got a guy, Alex Perez, that's been out-grappled and out-grappled and out-grappled. Then he comes in, he, he he sparks this, one of the, probably the chinniest dude at this point in the division. Now everyone's like, oh my God, Alex Perez, he's, he's going to be a, the next champion. It's like, what are we doing here? Just like last week when I'm like, you know, sometimes one plus one equals two. We had Raul Rosas, right? And I'm like, dude, he's... You have somebody that can get out. He's fighting somebody that has shown time and time again that they can get out grappled, right? And people are all, oh, Ricky's a tough dude, though, and he's he, he's the Dane, and he can do this. No. 
He's going to get taken down. He's going to get steamrolled. Right? Tatsuo Taro is going to come in. He's going to set up the strike, the, the, the takedowns with the striking. And we've seen people get on the back of Alex Perez and choke him out. And Tatsuo Taro on the ground is as slick as anybody. Tatsuo Taro is going to roll. Who has outgrappled Alex Perez? Who? Yeah, I just, I just, he's as slick as anybody. Those are really high-level guys. Tatsuo Taro is as high-level on the ground, I believe, as Figgy and Pantoja. Yeah, but, okay, Pantoja got one takedown. One. Figgy had one takedown. Nobody has ever taken down Alex Perez more than one time. That other than Muhammad They Mikhaya. took him down and submitted him immediately. What are you talking about? They took him down and just I, immediately I, I submitted get, him. I get, what you're, I get that. I get, the, I get what you're saying there. But I actually so would think... So you're like, he's only been taken down. Well, yeah, because he got finished immediately. What, are you, <laughs> what, is, what kind of argument is that? Not immediately. And what a guillotine mean? choke is not taken down, submitted immediately. There were zero takedowns from Figgy. Zero takedowns from Figgy. Alex Perez shot the takedown and got choked. So that doesn't count. So Pantoja is the only person who took him down and then submitted and him. Makai was just ragged on him. A, a sloppy Makai was three, taken down. Th he got three for 20. 17 of those takedowns were defended. I completely agree with you. Alex Perez did nothing with no sense of urgency. I completely agree. It's his fault he lost that fight. But I, what I disagree is I don't think it's like, oh, Perez has been submitted three times, so he's going to get submitted. Because, okay, Joseph Benavidez... KO'd him. Divas and Figueredo did submit him with a guillotine because Alex shot a takedown. And then Pantoja submitted him. That's it. He's got two submission losses. One of them was his own fault because he shot a takedown. And the other is to, to the current is champion. Fucking, at this point, everyone was talking about Makaev being the next dude. Tatsuro Tyro is, is twice the fighter Makaev is at this point. And Makaev looked like fucking shit and still won that fight. He did win, and he had staff, and I guess you know how much how much credence With zero strike. I staff. mean, the most telegraphed did nothing. <laughs> did just laid there, and Alex Perez let him win that fight. Now you have a, a young kid that actually knows how to strike, that can mix in takedowns, has is is be probably better actual grappling than Makayev. Definitely better, hundred percent better grappling, not better wrestling. Good luck, but better grappling. But also keep in mind, so we're gonna say he was taken down and submitted in the first round by Alex Pantoja. That was multiple years ago, and Alex is the current champion. Literally outside of that, you can't count the Figgy one because he shot a takedown and was submitted in a title fight. I don't know. I, I, I don't think this is a crazy line. I think the line makes sense. I'm not saying that Alex Perez is going to dominate. This is nuts, blah, blah, blah. But I do think Tatsuro Tyra's wrestling is not good. I don't think it's good. I think his wrestling is overrated. Alex just showed us he can defend takedowns from the best wrestler in the division. I don't have bet openly money, but I'll bet openly you. <laughs> you want to bet openly that, it? The sentence doesn't really make sense, does it? Well, I'm going to make a deposit if you'll take it. I'll bet whatever you want. All right, I'll make a deposit. I'll send you a bet openly because I do think Alex Perez can win this fight. At plus 170... I think it makes a little bit of sense. I do think that the How two does and he a half, win? he just just defends takedowns, and then people just chops the leg. Get tired. Same way he beat Juicy A Formiga, who is a nasty grappler, far better than Tatsuro Tyra. He just chops that leg down, defends a takedown, lights that leg up. Tatsuro Tyra was in trouble against Edgar Chavez. Was he though? He got dropped. Just a guy just holding onto a guillotine. He got dropped. Nonsense the guillotine. He got dropped. Edgar Charles dropped his ass, then held on to a guillotine in a different round. Edgar Charles beat Carlos Candelario, Connecticut's own. CJ Vergara, that's a decent win. Jesus Aguilera, not a good win. Edgar Charles, not a good win. Carlos Hernandez, not a good win. But he did knock him out on his feet, so that was impressive. I listen. I'm not. I'm. I don't want to. I don't want it to sound like I'm like you're nuts for picking Tatsuro Tyra because that's not the case. I'm just defending Alex. Because you made it sound like it's just so easy to take this dude down and submit his dumb ass. I'll get some bet openly money going. You gonna spend the 80s? You think he wins by finish? I'm assuming. Yup. <laughs> you gonna spend the eighty six hundred dollars on him in draft kicks? Yup. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Well, Jacob and I are very split here on the main event. And when I say very, he's 
if this is the line, Jacob's all the way over here on Tyra, and I'm right here on Perez. I'm at the line, but I am on the Perez side. If you do want to check out our potentially, I don't have bets on Perez, but I will place one, our potentially conflicting bets on this fight, but the bets on all the other fights, the picks, the round line leans, and everything else, just go to wewantpicks.com, click become a member at the top. It is only $10 for an entire month's worth of access. That month is going to give you this card, UFC Saudi Arabia with the new main event, and then UFC 303 with Conor McGregor because I do not believe that fight has dropped. We'll also send you $50. The only thing you need to do to get it is go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. Use our link to sign up with any one of our betting partners. Make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you. It's affiliate marketing. They're going to pay me. I'm going to slice off some of that money and give it right back to you. You can use that money to become a premium member. You'll unlock the line movement tracker, the detailed data metrics and analytics, the DraftKings optimizer preloaded with the ownership projections, the safety parlay, which has an all-time event win percentage of almost 70%. You'll also get more than just me and Brazilian Jacob over here. You're going to get Artem, who just picked a perfect PFL card tonight on Thursday. You're going to get the pick GPT. That's the artificial intelligence picking fights based solely off of historical data. And then the betting systems we are developing around the artificial intelligence. And if you want to send us something, here is the address. Jakey boy, any last words for the people? Probably going to wake up tomorrow to terrible news. Jacob is uh, stressing the UFC 303 main event. And I get it. That's all Twitter gives a fuck about. So hopefully so not. It's all uh, it's the main event and the co-main. I mean, it's spent a lot of fucking money. The co-main event, the co-main got better when Carlos Ulberg stepped in. That was a better fight. And then now with Jamal Hill out. Like, I liked Carlos Ulberg. It's a completely new, I mean. Yeah, they, they're, they're not together. getting. The co-main yeah. and the main, according to Ariel, is fucking completely different. So. Well, you said you think that they got Diego um, Diego Lopes taking on uh, Ortega. Brian Ortega. That's a good co-main event. Make that the co-main. That's a quality fight. It matters for the division. It means something. That's a good fight. But I agree. I was looking forward to Jamal Hill losing again because I liked Jamal Hill and the way he handled that Alex Bejeda loss was just so like, dude, challenging strangers on the internet to fight and stuff. You're 6'4". What are we doing here? Former world champion. What's happening right now? Well, hopefully you do not get that bad news, and neither do I, because you and I will be in Vegas. Guys, thank you so much for the watch. We appreciate every last one of you. We'll see you next week.